my brothers, my sister, last week's message that we completed, I just want to remind you a few things about that message. After that also, the message that we have started on Wednesday will be completed tonight. The message that previously we took it, it was, are you a disciple of Jesus? And then we had many subjects or many subtitles under which God was telling us that if you are a disciple, you must believe in the word of Jesus and abide in Jesus' word. You must love God and love one another. You must be able to bear much fruits and good fruits. So also, there is another important thing that Jesus was speaking to us through the word of God. If you abide in me, I will abide in you. Abiding in the Lord Jesus is very, very important. We go around here and there. We spend a lot of time around all other things. But when you are in the presence of God, give your full heart, full soul, full strength, and full body to the living God, including your mind. So you shall be able to hear the voice of God, and you shall be able to understand what God wants to tell you, and the Lord will establish you. Bible clearly says, Jesus told his disciples, these are the important things that you should follow. If you are my follower, you must abide in my words, and I will abide in you. So also you must abide in the love of God, and you shall love one another. And there are so many things we studied about that. So also you must be able to bear good fruits. Connected to that, tonight I have another message that God gave it to me in regards to the second message that I started it was, or it is from 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 11 and 12. Except the teachings of God, you must not worship the idol. You must leave the idol worship. Jesus is a living God. Do not put him on the cross again and again. He is a living God. He moves around, walks around, comes and touches you and touches me. That's what we see. But our concept of living is not changed because we believe in religion. And the word of the Lord clearly says, therefore, Paul was telling Timothy as a son that what exactly you have to do it, you have to correctly teach every one of them. And what you are teaching them, continue with that. Continue with that. Now, one of the brothers called me from India and told me, brother, many times you came, and whenever I was praying after the prayer, or sometimes he used to call me and tell me, brother, don't pray like that. This is not the way that you should do it. You should only take the name of Jesus only once. And I did not understand that time. And you told me many times that when we are in the group, we are supposed to say, we pray together. Don't make it yourself individual. Don't make it your individual. I am praying, but I ask the Lord, we pray in Jesus' mighty name. We ask this pastor to be blessed in Jesus' mighty name. I gave him the example. I sat with him many times in the sanctuary. He did not do it. And somewhere somebody asked him to pray. And the pastor immediately corrected him in the congregation. He said, how come your pastor did not teach you to pray like that? He did not tell you how to pray? And he was surprised. And he remembered what exactly I was telling him all the time. My brothers, my sister, many times you feel that your principle of living in Christianity is correct. Many times I feel that what I'm doing in Christianity in the services of God is correct. Many times you'll be feeling like that, that I go to the service, I have heard the word of God, I know the word of God, and I will do what is pleasing to me. My brothers, my sister, if it does not please unto God, you're not becoming a pleaser to anybody else. God gives the favor in the sight of man and God for a man who loves God and obeys his word. Everybody, I can hide from you, you can hide from me, but you cannot hide things from God. In his eyes, it is totally naked. How much time you give it to others, how much time you spend outside, how much time you give it to God, and what time you come, and what time you go, God is watching everything, including mine. So God is giving you the example through Paul's teaching to Timothy, and then in verse 12 he says, let no man despise your youth, especially the young sons and daughters. And many times I also take it to myself, though the age does not count in the sight of God. Age does not count in the sight of God. It's very, very important that we should be able to understand what God is saying to us through the book of the Holy Bible, through the message that you hear. And tonight's message is, let no man despise your youth. But be thou an example of the believers. This is my tonight's message, which I'm going to complete, God willing. 
God is saying through Paul the apostle, he said, be thou an example. You be an example. You become an example of the believers. That when you tell others, brother, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Are you a believer? Yes, I'm also a believer. But the character, the talk, the word, the way of living, the way of, you know, moving in the sanctuary, somebody prays, you don't like it. Somebody reads the psalm, you don't like it. Somebody prays this way, I don't like it. Somebody prays in some other way, we find so many parts, but we never say to amen to that prayer, but found out so many parts. What is happening? You are losing your own blessing. You are not becoming that example in the sight of God. Don't become man pleaser or preacher pleaser. I was asking the Lord, what shall I do? In my last night's dream, I was actually praying like that, and little late we went to bed. When I went to the bed, I was always having some type of important, you know, things about the Word of God, about my character with Jesus Christ, our Lord, about my day-to-day -day messages with the Lord. And I was telling the Lord, I know some things are not perfect, but make me to understand that I shall be able to do it, whether my preaching is right or not right, whether it is going on correct or not. Last week also I asked some other sister, is this preaching is okay? Because I was thinking, if it is not working in our lives, the preaching is useless. The word of God is useless. And like that I was sleeping. And you know what dream I got? I saw somebody else preaching. Many people are clapping hands. Many people are clapping hands. This, this is my dream or vision at last night. Many people are clapping hands. And I was just thinking, oh, how nice it is. So many people are gathered in that crusade or convention or the preaching is going on. I was searching who is this preacher. I could not see the face. But I saw him. Oh, he's preaching. And people are clapping hands. And people are shouting. And people are getting up and sitting down. I was in my heart. I was asking the Lord, Lord, see how nice he is preaching. How many people are clapping hands? Sometimes I don't see this in our congregation, Lord. Sometimes I don't see this. And the Lord told me like this. Do you like to hear? Yes. Do you like to hear? Yes. He said, if you sing well, you preach well, don't expect their clap offerings. Don't expect their clappings. That is coming into you. But if they don't clap, and if they say inside their hearts, praise the Lord, hallelujah, or hear correctly and give their total body, spirit, and soul to my word, that is more important than clapping hands. Hallelujah. That is not at all important. Hallelujah. Don't expect that. And I was clearly seeing myself that nobody is clapping hands, but Jesus is saying, this is good. This is nice. This is correct. So today onwards we are going to learn one thing. When you pray, when I pray, when I preach, when you preach, we shall see how God is glorified. Amen? Amen. How God is glorified. Number two, how God is, you know, felt in the presence or hear his presence so that he shall touch my heart and your hearts. Amen. The presence. Third thing, don't need anything to shout and scream and make, you know, this type of holy noise because you are giving unto the man, but no need to give it unto the man. Give unto the Lord. Lord and God will bless you. Amen. My brothers, my sister, my tonight's message is, let no man despise thy youth. But be thou an example of the believer. You become an example of the believer. Tonight, my testimony, your testimony, our believer life is not perfect in the sight of the world. Not perfect at all. They can find faults. They can say you're an angry man. They can say some other things to you. They can say some other things to me. They can say he's a money-minded man, a servant, whatsoever it may be, or too worldly. And they also can find out so many differences in our conversation. So therefore the Bible clearly says, Paul was telling to Timothy that let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers. believers. Why he was guiding Timothy? He was guiding Timothy because Timothy was a young fellow, unmarried fellow, and living in the world, and so that he shall be able to learn good. And he was also telling him, be thou an example, as I became an example of our Jesus Christ, our Lord. Youth, it is easy to scatter here and there. Easy, even in the church, sometimes to send messages here and there, and we think that nobody's watching. I can make somebody laugh, I can make somebody laugh, I can make somebody watch, I can make somebody read, but he's watching. He is watching. He is watching me and watching you also. And therefore he said, be thou an example of the good believer or of the believer. In what? In your word. Then in your conversation. Now this conversation nowadays quietly going on on the messages also. 
So, in word, in conversation, in charity. Charity means, actually, this word has come from the olden, you know, style of writing, but actually it is the word that says love. In spirit, and the last three important things are there. In spirit, in faith, in purity. purity. And we shall read the word, and we shall have the song. Come on. Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. God wants to tell you, be thou an example of a good believer. Be thou example of the believers. Among the believers, you must be shining believer. And the Lord will surely bless you. Let us hear the song. Dedicate our soul, spirit and body to the Lord. And we shall go ahead with the message.
I take the time of yours and make you to hear such songs or hymns just to stir up your spirit that you shall be enlightened in the presence of God. Of God. God shall start shining more and more upon your life. You can see that glory and that light of Christ to come upon you and you shall become one in that light. That's the only sense, nothing else. Not to entertain with you or not to entertain this worship team for songs, no. To enlighten your hearts, mind and bodies in the presence of God so that we shall be all full of the power of God and the Spirit of God and the strength of God shall be upon us. If you are enlightened, say Amen. amen. This is another important thing I would like to tell you that Timothy, when he heard the word of God, he became encouraged and he was also preaching and teaching. I have completed <clears throat> after that, even in 3rd John, the Bible clearly says it was very, very important for them to understand and John was explaining about the apostolic wishes and how they have to be. Then after that, we also took Hebrew chapter 13, verse 16 and 17. In Hebrew chapter 13, verse 16 and 17, where the Bible clearly says, when you live a witness life, when you live on the earth a witness life, the Bible clearly says, then the man or the servant of God who has the rule over you, you have to greatly honor them. It's not for me. It's to make you understand wherever you go, probably you may travel abroad, Probably you may go to some other city. Probably you may go to some other country. Probably you may find some other church. And how you have to honor the man of God and understand what exactly they are telling you and uh, disciplining your life, you must be able to understand. Give honor to the man of God. It's very, very important. Give honor to the man of God. I'm again telling you. You don't take man of God very lightly. There is something that God has entrusted unto them. But you have to have a discerning spirit in whom, in you, that who is the perfect man of God? Who is the perfect servant of God? What this servant of God wants me? Why this servant of God taunting me for my weaknesses? Why this servant of God is telling me special scriptures? Why this servant of God is telling me being an elderly mother or woman or man or whatsoever it may be? You have to analyze. You cannot repeat to him saying that, no, I have this trouble, I have that trouble. No, I have gone undergone this type of problem, that type of problem. So I'm trying to explain, no, you first try to understand what the word of God is coming to you. Analyze your life if you are doing well in your life by your own wisdom and knowledge and understanding. Or own way of living, the style that you are living. Come back to Hebrew chapter 13, verses let us read tonight 15, 16, and 17. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually, that is, the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. Very important. Many people say, why are you repeating praise the Lord so many times? Why are you repeating hallelujah? No matter. You are not doing it for yourself. You are not doing it for others. You are doing it for your living God, who paid the penalty of our sin curse and penalty of death and kept you and me alive. We fail, but still watching us. We fail, but yet he is lifting us. We fail, but yet he is not pointing out our fingers or his fingers towards us, saying that you are still wrong. You are wrong. You are wrong. You are doing this wrong. You are not understood what sacrifice I have done. No way. He gives you free will. Or you are not under his bondage. You are under his love. Therefore, he does not see a wrong things of yours and gives you lots of chances and chances and chances, many more, till you see the grave of yours. The word of the Lord clearly says, verse 16. But to do good and to communicate, forget not. For with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. The Bible clearly says all the time, but to do good, do good, okay, and to communicate, forget not. And don't forget to communicate. Communicate with one another, especially when you communicate with one another with the prayers, and also to communicate with God. Don't forget about that. 
Then the next thing. For with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. God is happy about that. You spend your time, God is happy. You give your time, God is happy. You understand what is the plan of God. You know, and accordingly, whatever you do, God will be happy. Always see that you please God more than man. I please God more than people. It's very important. That's the dream of my last night. That's the dream of my last night. And I have decided whether, sorry to say this, whether people understand and clap hands or whether people understand and say, praise the Lord. No, it should be very important that God is happy about the preaching that I have done, which is true from the extraction from the word of God, removing from the word of God and putting on the paper and giving to the sons and daughters so that they shall eat the bread of the Lord God Almighty and strengthen their faith in the Lord. Then the word of the Lord clearly says the final word, verse 17. Obey them. Obey them that have the rule over you. Obey them, those who have the rule over you. This is for every one of us, including me. We have to obey whoever is ruling over us. Our husbands, our wives, our fathers, our mothers, our, so our superiors in the jobs. Maybe a same lady. She also is the same one. Maybe your education is more than hers. She does not talk the same good English, but she is a superior. You have to honor. He is your boss. You have to honor. The worldly people say boss is always correct. You have to honor. You have to have everything done. And the word of the Lord clearly says, don't despise the servants of God, those who are teaching the word of God, honoring you, building you up, blessing you. Why? Because the Bible says, obey them that have the rule over you. And, and submit yourselves. Submit yourself to the teaching and preaching and the word of God they preach unto you. And what they are saying to you, try to understand. Is it for their gain or is it for your gain? Is it for your blessing or is it for the name and fame and same? Whatever it may be, you have to understand. The next thing the Bible clearly says, for, for, for they watch oh, for your souls. They watch over your souls. Watch over your souls. Brother, don't do this. Sister, don't do that. Don't do this. Don't do that. Don't be traditional man. Leave this ideal worship. Don't do this type of worship. Our God is a living God. Don't fix him on the cross again and again. When I tell somebody, somebody says, you're hurting me. Well, I said, this is what the word of God is teaching. And this is what God is teaching you. But have you understood? Have you understood that God is more concerned than me for your souls because he has allowed his son to pay the price for your sin, for your curse, and for your death? Have you understood that? After knowing also, still God is saying, don't do like that to your wife. Don't do like that to your husband. But he said, no, I will do. I don't want this husband. I don't want this wife. I don't want these children. I want to punish them. I want to do like that. Every time you are your own decisions, own decisions, Never understood what God is saying to you. God is concerned about your soul more than your dignity, more than your finances, more than your status, more than anything else. And that in charge he has given unto the servants of God. That's why Paul is saying to Timothy so well that you must be able to do in your youth. You must be careful in your conversation, in your word, in your activities, in your character, in your love. And not only that, in your spirit also you must be knowing whether the Spirit of God is working in you or you are working according to your fleshly spirit or the human spirit or the demonic spirit. So also he's asking a question, do you have a same faith to love God? If you have a faith to love God, you will love him as a real living God. And this is my question to you and me. Do we really love Jesus? Do we really know that he's a living God? Do you really know that he paid the penalty of your sins? And when you don't do what God is saying unto you in the book of the Bible and still go after the idol and mingle with the idol worshiper. My brother, I can 100% give you a guarantee. You don't love God, I don't love God. I was telling this brother here so many times. And the wife used to always say, brother, I also told him sometimes that pastor doesn't like it. No, I said, you are wrong. It is not pastor does not like it. It is the scripture says, reputation should not be there. The prayer has to be ended like that. It has to be together, must have a together one accord and one mind. You cannot say, I pray this prayer. You are cutting the people off from the church. You are praying in the church. You have to have, we pray this prayer. God, answer. When you say, we pray this prayer, they are also saying, amen. And they are together with your prayer. And God will be very happy because everybody's prayer will be answered. Till somebody tells 
It has not come to his senses. And today he's telling, and yesterday he started telling me messages. Oh, I realize why you did not tell me. That time you did not tell me more deeper. What deeper to tell now? Still finding fault? You should be able to understand. For they watch over your souls as they that must give account. We are supposed to give an account to God if you are not praying properly. If your worship to the living God is not correct. If you are not obeying the word of the Lord. If you are despising the word that God has given unto you. You don't understand the truth. You have not taken the steps that God wants to take you. And wants you to take the steps. You must be able to realize this is not something simple. This is connected to your soul. Because one day we will pass away from here. But we have to get into that place which God has prepared for us, giving a special sacrifice of his own son, that you shall be there in the kingdom of God. Let his blood go. Let his sacrifice be done. Let his blood be gone. Let the sacrifice be gone. I have noticed, I have written, I have asked so many people, why you don't want the fellowship? And why you don't want to have the fellowship? What you have learned from the fellowship? You are coming there for the church? You are coming there for the pastor or you are coming there to show that you are the child of God and you came to worship the Lord. Until today, it doesn't go to many people's mind and they say, I'm a good believer. I'm a believer. I also pray. I'm a believer. I do like this. I'm a believer. The believer has a sign. Therefore, God is saying to you through the false teaching, be thou an example of that believer. Where is your example? Where is your word? Where is your presence in the presence of God? Where is your fellowship with God? What are you doing when you are in the presence of God? You don't even want to lift the hands. The word of the Lord clearly says the next command. As they that are, that must. As they that must give account, that they may do it with joy and not with grief. You shall not do it with grief, but you shall do it with joy. You shall obey the word of God with joy. Accept the word of God that comes to you from the Son of God with joy. Why? For, for that is unprofitable for you. Other things are not profitable, but your soul is profitable. Your soul must get that profit. Your soul must understand the righteousness. Your soul must know what is required for you and what you should feed to your soul more than the worldly things. Somebody said, never mind, we can have more parties, we can have more food distribution, we can have a discipline. I'm ready to help you in whatever it want. It is not that. God is not happy with more bank banquets. God is happy more when you fast and pray, when you dedicate your sacrifice, your bodies as a living sacrifice and come together and pray and come together and worship him and give him your time unto him. He's not asking a special time. Any time during the daytime, whenever you get it. The Bible says, Proverbs chapter 18, verse 11 and 12. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 11 and 12. The rich man's wealth is a strong city and has a high wall in his own conceit. Before destruction, the heart of man is haughty and before honor is humility. Then when I studied about this, Proverbs chapter 18, the Bible clearly says, God does not want you to be, you know, very proud about the situation that you are in. Your good position, don't be, you know, too proud about that. Good finances, don't be proud. God has made you a preacher, don't be proud about that. God has made you something great in the sanctuary, don't become proud about that. God is using you for some purposes, don't become proud about that. Be humble, be simple, because God has a great plan for you. Your life is in his hands. Your own life is not in your hands. The Bible clearly says, even Peter, Peter, when he was with Jesus, Jesus was always correcting him. And when Jesus was telling Peter, Peter, what happened? He said, whole night, day and night I tried there. And I did not find. But Jesus said, no, put it there. Put your nets there. He puts only one. But he said to Peter, put your nets there. And Peter did that. And he got a great catch. And it was that, you know, he could not bear it, that catch to bring it out of his net and to fill up his boat. My brothers, he needed the help of others. The same Peter... The same Peter, as soon as he came out of that catch outside, he surrendered his life to Jesus. He understood who is talking to him. He knew who is the miracle working God. He also knew what exactly he meant. And Peter put himself down before him and followed him saying nothing at all. My brothers, my sister, God does miracles. God does signs. God gives you one example. God gives you another example. Where is our mind tonight? 
Where are our thoughts tonight? What we are thinking? Still I am right after doing all the wrong? Still I know what exactly I am doing it? I am a good preacher? No. The Bible clearly says in Proverbs chapter 18, don't become proud. Don't be proud of your job, your finances, your status. Nothing belongs to you. You came naked. One day suddenly you will go back naked. That is the time God is going to require every account of all that you have done on the earth, including mine. Nobody is going to ask an account. Neither our parents, brother, sister, own wife, own husband, nobody. But he is going to ask an account. Who has a life in our, our life in his hands and also heaven as a declaration or crown as a blessing in kingdom of heaven. Whom we shall be afraid and how we shall be able to do it. My brothers, my sister, in 1 Peter chapter 3, remember the submission of Peter. Remember the submission of Peter. As soon as he saw one miracle of Jesus, he totally started following him. And he became a wonderful servant of God, a wonderful apostle. And everybody recognized, isn't he? He was with Jesus all the time. He was fearful about the society. He was afraid about the you know, people all around. He said to the smallest maid, when she said, you are with Jesus. Now he's hanging there on the cross. You are also with Jesus. He said, I don't know what you're talking about, that man. Flesh, man, fear of the world, all these things are possible. But look at his testimony in the Bible. That is what God is asking you. Be a testimony of a good example of a believer. Become a good testimony. Become a good testimony. First Peter chapter 3, verses 9, 10, and 11. Not rendering evil for evil, or railing for railing, but contrariwise blessing, knowing that ye are thereunto called, that ye should inherit a blessing. Slowly and loudly, the first sentence. Not rendering evil for evil. The Bible clearly says, First Peter chapter 3, verse 9. Not Don't e give evil to anybody evil. Don't say that I want to teach him also with the same. No. It doesn't deserve you. You don't become a good believer by doing that. You know that somebody has hurt you. Somebody has talked wrong against you. You don't have to prove that. You have to be only knowing that my God knows about it. He has an account of my life. I need not to prove to anybody, even if other people think that I'm wrong. Coming back to the next word. 10. Come back to 10. For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil. Very important from your words. Maybe God is saying to me that I should refrain my word. In another word, I should control my word. I cannot blabber, lose my word in anything. When you hate, when you hate your own brother, when you hate your own husband, when you hate your own son, when you hate your own daughter, when you hate the brothers, sisters of the congregation, you're already committing murder in your heart. We also hate, we also commit words out of our mouth, not knowing what we are speaking, not understanding, oh, I'm talking about somebody, she is not a daughter of so-and-so, he is not a daughter of so-and-so, but they are sons and daughters of the living God. Amen. I have to give an account to the Lord. Nobody has that fear. No, 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 she is not good. No, 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 he is not good. No, 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 he is not worthy. No, 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 she is not supposed to do all that. Still, those things are there in our mind and my mind. God wants to set right our lives. Listen to the voice of God and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers. Okay. Remember, whoremongers and sorcerers and abominable. It, these are the three important things that man should be able to understand and warn himself. You have to warn yourself. Abominable, which is not pleasing in the sight, you cannot commit. Sometimes it can be food. Sometimes it can be worship. Sometimes it can be praises. Sometimes it can be your mobile. That you don't want to, you know, read the word of God and you spend your time in mobile. You have to know what is pleasing in the sight of God and what is not. So also whoremongers and sorcerers. Whoremongers is connected to all manner of, you know, fleshly sin. One has to be very careful. And we have to be very careful about. And sorcerers going to so many soothsayers. Saying and asking. And don't even run after prophets. I want to tell you one thing. Don't even run after the prophet saying that this prophet will speak to me. That prophet will tell. That prophet is very good. I will book my ticket and go to that prophet. You are making that prophet as your God. Prophet is sent by God to come to your house. Samuel was told to go to David's place. Go and anoint him and make him a king. The king did not come walking to him. 
but he has to go to the king we run after the prophets run after the men servants and we seeing we think that it is good for us to go and get the blessing from them no you first trust god god will send the sons of god to your door they will knock the door and they will come it happened in my life i have so many great testimonies in my life very great testimonies that made me to become preacher that made me to be strong that made me to love god and continuously serve god if you have a determination challenge that is another word challenge christian's life is a challenge life if you have that challenge challenge with god god speak to me god you tell me what to do give me the word so that i shall believe your word and god will speak to you through the word of god you heard so many times that jesus also was hearing the voice of god the father many said you need not to die he said no my father said it is my father's will and also sometimes jesus made his own will john the baptist was born before jesus christ of nazareth was born later and when he was born according to the entire situation according to the word of god he goes to john the baptist he goes to john the baptist and for what he has gone what a man yes for the water baptism he has gone he did not say who is this john what is he preaching i am a son of god why should i go to john and take the water baptism no my brother he humbled himself he made himself down to earth he went to john the baptist he took the water baptism though john the baptist knew in the spirit that he is the son of god i'm not supposed to baptize him he is going to baptize us with the holy spirit and fire but he went and he took it my brothers if jesus could humble so much who died for the entire world who are you and who are me to fight with our own husband fight with our own wives fight with our own family members fight with all the brothers sisters and hate everybody around those who are around us how come i am not changing how my believer's life is not a good example why i am not becoming that example that god wants to you know tell me that is be thou an example of a good believer or be thou an example of the believers among the believers become a good believer the word of the lord clearly says the next thing and idolaters idolaters how many times you have heard now can anybody stand up and he said here that no brother i have left all idol worship and when the day came and i heard the voice of the holy ghost through the book of the bible i'm not worshiping idols never i'm mixing with them and praying is there anybody we have no such examples because we lose ourselves not in a proper manner being a disciple a good disciple a good believer of jesus christ of nazareth we have not decided there are some things you may say i am not working worshiping the idol but there are certain things that is making you not to go and worship the lord not to pray during the day time but get into your mobile not to pray the word of god touch the word of god but sleep all the time not to read the word of god but go you know touring here and there not to read the word of god but drive all the time all those things are becoming idle spend more time before the television less time to hear the voice of god is also television becomes idle your job becomes idle your activities become idle your driving becomes idle your wife becomes idle sometimes your husband becomes idle you are ready to buy so many things for the house but you are not ready to spend 10 minutes in the presence of god and pray lord is it required for my house or not the bible clearly says idolaters and all, all liars this is very very important we always speak so many things and we say i gave him a good excuse we feel that excuses are good for us we don't consider excuses as a lie we speak lies upon our own brothers and sisters upon our own family members and the bible says and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone which is called the second death god is able to destroy our body and god is able to destroy our soul in the lake of fire forever so that no trace of my life and our life is there why because we have broken all the laws of god all the commandments of god do you want to be a good example of jesus do you want to be a good believer of jesus christ of nazareth my brothers my sister get back to the word of god and follow the word of god nothing else don't follow man follow the word follow the lord's word follow the living word follow the word that has come unto you in the preaching from the son of god through the holy book of the bible and you follow that and your life will be blessed the bible clearly says the final word acts chapter 5 remember in acts chapter 5 this is a wonderful example i'm going to pray for everybody tonight 
I will try my level best to hit the target. At 8 o'clock, I will stop. But let us read this. Acts chapter 5, verses 1 to 3. Acts chapter 5 is a husband and wife. Acts chapter 5 is an example of a good believer. Acts chapter 5 is the example of a rich man and rich wife. Acts chapter 5 is the example of those who knew God, those who knew the Son of God. Acts chapter 5, verses 1 to 3. But a certain man named Ananias, with Saf Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession and kept back part of the prize, his wife also being privy to it, and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. These are the landowners. And you can put yourself into the basket, businessman, businesswoman. Whatever you want to do it, do it. Whatever way you want to put your salaries, or maybe you're a working, hardworking man, hardworking woman, maybe you are something else. But put yourself into the place of Ananias, into the place of Safira, and make your living better than today. Why? Because every liar is judged in the presence of God. God is judging the liars. God is not, but the Holy Spirit of God is judging immediately. You may tell me, brother, no, 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 no I'm doing very correct. I don't worship idol. I don't go to this church, that church. I am already one church only. For me, nothing at all. My relatives are not person, brother. I have no concern with my relatives. When I go on vacation, I'm only with the Lord. I go to the believer's church. I worship the believer's church. And I go to the believer's place. Even if there are few people, I go there. Is there anybody to say that? Come on, hear this voice and understand what God is saying to you. God is talking about Ananias and God is talking about Sapphira. They are landowners, they have sold their land, and... But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled an heart to lie to the Holy Ghost? You sold the property, and you are coming back and telling the servants of God, those are already filled with the power of God. Those who gave the business prophecy, those who gave the prophecy in regards to family, those who gave the prophecy in regards to your sons and daughters, to them you are coming back and telling, no, I sold it. I sold it, maybe, suppose I'm talking to you in Indian rupees. I sold it for 10 lakhs, but I'm coming and saying to the Son of God, only 5 lakhs rupees I sold. Ananias is telling, and the Bible says, but Peter said, Ananias, why had Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? Question mark. Then the Bible says, why it remained, was it not thine when it was remaining? It was yours. And after you were sold, was it not in your power? It is in your power. Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Then why are you talking about this? People have money, they say they don't have money. Sometimes parents are giving money to the sons and daughters, put to the offering. They don't put complete offering, they keep something back. They think that God does not know, but God speaks to the Son of God. Many people tell the other person, brother, I don't have money. I don't have money, brother. I need the money. But God has already said, there are lots of money in the baggage. Like there are lots of, not baggage, sorry. In the bag, lots of money in your money purse, but saying there is no money. And the Bible says, this is what for me and for you. That is all in your power, then why to lie? The Bible says, has thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. You have not lied unto man. You have not lied unto anybody. You have not lied unto your husband. You have not lied unto your parents, but you have lied unto God. Children, you have to be very careful about this. And the Bible says the next, what exactly happens? Come on. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down. The Bible and clearly says, and Ananias, hearing this word, fell down and gave up his ghost, died at the same time. No life at all. One minute, one minute, one minute, everything is gone. Everything is gone. And great fear came on all of them that heard these things. Fear came to everybody. But the wife is not afraid. The Bible clearly says, come on, the next, come on, go ahead. And the young man arose, wound him up, and carried him out they and took buried his dead him. body and go to burial. The next thing the Bible clearly says, and it was about the space of three hours. After three hours, his wife comes, and his wife also says to the Peter, to Peter, Peter, you told me to sell this land for 20 lakhs. No, it did not go for 20 lakhs. She has 20 lakhs in her hands. She has 20 lakhs with her husband. She doesn't know that her husband is died, but she's saying, no, 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 not 20 lakhs, it's only 15 lakhs. 
And the Bible clearly says the next word, and same the, thing, what happened to Ananias, same thing happened to her. Peter says, why are you lying? This is your own money. Nobody wants your money. Why are you lying? And she also fell down because she spoke lie to the Holy Ghost. Tonight, God is telling you, tonight, God is telling me, stop lying and behave perfectly. You are not cheating your husband. You are not cheating your wife. You are not cheating your son. You are not cheating your daughter. Children, you are not te te teaching your parents. You are teaching the Holy Ghost. Because the Bible clearly says, everyone, those are born again in the Spirit. What they carry? They carry the Spirit of God. When you are born again, what it carries in you? Hello? When you are born again in the water, you went down in the water, you came up with the water, what you got it? You got Spirit the Holy Spirit of God in you. Words of God, you cannot lie to anybody. Come on, be serious about this. And let us turn to the Lord and become a good example. The uh, Bible clearly says, be thou an example of a good believer. God bless you all. Glorify God. You become a true believer today. Hallelujah. I am surely. Nobody says amen. amen. God is blessing us with a double dose. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's bow down. Father, we thank you. Help me to be a great example in thy sight, Lord. That end of the day, when I come to the kingdom of heaven, you shall not say, I never knew you. But you shall recognize me as thy servant. So also all my brothers, sisters, and all these children, and the entire worship team shall be recognized. We all, when we come to heaven, you shall say, well done, my son. Well done, my daughter. Stay here. And that's what we want to hear, Lord. Nobody shall be rejected, and nobody shall be saved that I never knew you. Nobody shall hear that word because our Lord is the loving and compassionate. Help me to change and help us to change. Let the name of the Lord be glorified. Help us to be a good example in the sight of many other believers as a perfect believer. In Jesus' almighty name we pray. Amen. May the love of God the Father, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, fellowship of the Holy Spirit of God be with us now and forever and ever. Amen. in the name of Jesus. Lift in the blood of Jesus. Lift in the name of Jesus. God bless you all. Amen.